Ben Pierce and the Rosa Tracker. Recently, Elon Musk had some updated plans for the trip to Mars and for Starship and for all of that kind of stuff. So let's talk a little bit more about what his plans actually are and how they differ from some of the things that I hear in the media. Let's get down to it. So Starship, as we speak right now, is slowly being assembled for a possible orbital launch no earlier than May, more likely sometime during the summer. This will be its first launch, of course, and it has the potential to do a lot of really cool things with that. But what will it actually take to get Starship heading towards Mars? Well, as you may recall, in the original talk when the interplanetary transport lander was talked about uh, about five years ago, Elon Musk said that this year they would be sending something to Mars. I feel uh, fairly confident that we can complete the ship and be ready for a launch in about five years. Five years seems like a long time to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. The launch window to get to Mars is roughly September 2022. It's patently obvious that they will not send anything to Mars this year. In fact, there may actually be nothing that is sent to Mars. There were two missions that were going to in addition to Starship. Uh, one is the ExoMars that has been delayed as a result of the Ukraine-Russian war and sanctions that have happened as a result of that. And the other one was a uh, university was going to send a mission to Mars on their own budget as a separate mission to the Psych mission that was going to head out there anyways. But uh, that also is not going to happen. So none of the missions are going to happen. For the first time in a while, I think we're not going to have any missions launching towards the planet Mars. And this may be the last time actually that this ever happens. Time will tell. Elon Musk's plans have largely been in three phases, two of which have been talked about publicly. The one that gets the most attention is the final futuristic version that's 40 years down the line, where we're able to send a million people to Mars at a cost of about 200,000 per person. But the architecture allows for a cost per ticket um, of less than two hundred thousand dollars, maybe as less, maybe as little as a hundred thousand um, dollars over time. To You're going to cram a hundred people into a starship. It's going to be crazy, but for that to happen, you have to have the infrastructure already on Mars to support the people there. Multiple ships, then start building out the city, then making the city bigger, <laughs> even bigger. You can't possibly have that many people go without the life support, without food growing, without the domes that they need to live in already constructed. And this is just a transportation. Much like the early explorers here to the United States had to kind of set things up before you could start having the mass immigration that happened in the later days. Let's Put that futuristic vision aside, that's not going to happen for a long time. And quite frankly, I'm not sure how much that will happen. The $100,000 to $200,000 per ticket, yeah, that'll probably eventually happen. But I don't think you're going to cram 100 people in a starship, as I've talked about here on the channel before. The early phase is composed of two to three different sets of missions to Mars. The very first one I'm convinced that has not been publicly stated, but it's very likely to happen, is they're going to send one mission to Mars to basically verify that the landing works, make sure everything is looking solid, and kind of show everybody, hey, we can actually do this. Because I don't think people are really going to believe that until that mission happens. Um, there probably won't be much of note there. This will be like a Falcon Heavy type mission to have a dummy type payload. They'll, they'll probably do something useful. Maybe they'll talk to some universities and say, hey, you want to bolt something on? Similar to what the Red Dragon was going to be. This will just be a Red Dragon mission, but on a much larger scale. Red Dragon was going to send a crew dragon to land on the surface of Mars, but without the crew. 
it's a very interesting concept and you know, it ended up not happening because they changed the landing system and the landing system was no longer as compatible but it's still an interesting possibility that may someday happen the next part of this first phase is to pre-send some cargo missions and this will happen that's not a typo <laughs> any serious mission to getting to mars that has got off the ground will send some missions out the 26 months before you send humans there this will contain cargo it may re contain their um their return vehicle it will demonstrate that everything works. It will have a lot of the kind of stuff that we need. You saw this in The Martian. You've seen this in The Case for Mars. That's Robert Zubrin's book and so on and so forth. It's just a good idea to do something like this. When you have these missions and the current plan is two to three cargo missions that will be sent ahead of time. Uh, likely they'll contain the power of solar panels, stuff like that. Um, probably not food, but they're going to have this essentials. Then 26 months later, another mission will be sent. This time there'll be four starships that are sent. Two of them that will have humans on board, uh, probably about 12 each, which is a perfectly reasonable number for as big of a vehicle as starship is. If you imagine a large airplane, you have 12 people in there, you could live in there for some period of time and it'd be perfectly fine. Although if you had 100, it might get a little crowded. So they'll head to Mars, these 100 people, they will be setting up the means to get back to Earth. They're going to have to set up a in-situ resource utilization factor. So basically they're going to make their own rocket fuel to be able to get back to Earth. It will take a lot of power to do that. And I don't think any more than one of those initial vehicles is ever going to come back to Earth of the initial seven or eight or however many they send. Uh, it's just going to take some serious effort to really make sure that this is going to work. And quite frankly, they're more valuable on Mars at that point in time. So that's the initial phase. I suspect the cost will be $125 million per ticket. A lot of that will come in the form of technology. So you know, NASA may provide the food and some of the other systems that SpaceX hasn't done that as a part of their thing. They may provide the equipment, the habitats, who knows. Um, they may you know, provide the nuclear reactor that will inevitably power some part of it. But NASA is going to be spending probably 100 to $125 million per seat, assuming that this actually happens. They may not give all of that to SpaceX, though they probably won't, as a matter of fact. Then there's a period of time between this initial exploration mission and the far future where we're sending massive number of people where things are going to start to change. Multiple ships then start building out the city, then making the city bigger, <laughs> even bigger. The early mission to Mars will have a, in large part, a scientific presence. I suspect that half of the people that are on that mission will be doing science most of the time. They will have to set up the base so that they can get back to Earth, but it's relatively minor. I suspect that some of these early astronauts will stay for an extended mission. So, you know, every 26 months, there's an opportunity to come back. About 18 months, roughly after landing, will be the first one that I suspect that most of the crew, but not all of the crew, will come home on. And some of those people will stay. They'll be on Mars kind of by themselves. They'll probably be enjoying having the habitat and lots of space to go rummage around while the people will be more crammed than they ever were on the return voyage home because only one of the starships is going to have. So if 18 people are on there, it'll still be a little bit crowded, but you know, it's doable. And they could take all of them home if they really needed to. Um, they're going to continue to do the science research, but they're going to start to slowly expand. And quite frankly, SpaceX may send some people there to 
build a habitat. The next mission that will have humans on board will launch 26 months later. It will land 26 months later. Uh, it'll probably be about twice as big and the cost per seat will go down in half. They're going to land on Mars and they're going to have some infrastructure already there. There'll probably be about 50 people there. Um, probably in three or four different starships. I, I don't suspect that they're going to get to more than 20 or so people per starship heading towards Mars for a long time. But you know, they, maybe there'll be 60 people in three different starships. That seems reasonable. These missions will start to expand out. They're um, going to be focused on getting more useful stuff. So the early in-situ resource utilization will be focused on rocket fuel. And that still will be a primary thing. But they're going to start to get oxygen. They're going to start to figuring out water. Uh, the plans for SpaceX to land are on the north part of Mars where they'll have access to water. So they'll start to focus on that a lot more. Whereas the first mission, they may even bring their own hydrogen to make the home. They may take a bunch of water and slowly, you know, cycle it out to have some oxygen and use the hydrogen to power it. The, um, Methane is the fuel of choice for getting to and from Mars. You can get oxygen from the atmosphere because there's carbon dioxide and you can turn that into oxygen with just some electricity and some fancy reactions. It's nothing too terribly hard to do. But with Starship, you know, the, the hydrogen's a little bit harder to come by. Uh, the easiest way is in the form of water. So they'll start to mine water. They'll start to mine other useful materials. Maybe they'll start to make iron, um, start to make steel on Mars so that they can build some larger structures because eventually the starships are not going to be their permanent habitats. They want to start building stuff on the surface of Mars and that's going to be the time frame where that happens. As each mission goes out, I expect that the number of people is going to double and the ticket price is going to be cut in half to make that happen. It may even triple or quadruple, who knows. But the cost is going to start to decrease pretty rapidly. Uh, 10 years out, it's still going to cost at least a million dollars per seat to get to Mars. But when you get there, you may have to purchase some land, but you'll be able to purchase a life supported bunker and you'll be relatively okay. It's going to start to become easier. You're going to start to have corporations that will send people out there to be able to build things out. And it's going to take some time. The earliest phase is going to be the astronaut class of people, the people who have been astronauts who are currently doing that. We have had over 600 people go into space. I guarantee you, you could ask almost any one of them, hey, you want to go to Mars? And they'll say, yes. They'll say, oh, there's a 20% chance that you'll die. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll still say yes. The vast majority of them. And, you know, it will be risky. The middling missions is going to be a really interesting thing I start to, I suspect that we're going to start to see some industrialization in low earth orbit. Uh, there are a lot of concepts for building space stations out there. Uh, we're going to start to see those. And, you know, when we start to see more people, when the cost goes down, a million dollars per seat into orbit in 10 years is probably not unheard of if Starship proves to be real. Um, proves to meet everything. In fact, you may even be able in 10 years time for a couple hundred thousand dollars, get a seat into orbit. And that opens some really interesting possibilities. There's a lot of things that we can manufacture in a low gravity environment that you simply can't do while you're on the surface of earth. And with the industrialization that will likely happen, we're going to start to see people going there. Some of these people, will also head to Mars. I suspect that in the early days, in the, the kind of phase two operations, 
the people who are going to go there are the people who would apply to be astronauts but don't get qualified for one reason or another. And, you know, the last time that they sent out applications for astronauts, there were tens of thousands of people who were doing that. They're going to have no shortage of people who are interested. And as it's proved to be safe, people are going to be willing to do it. It'll be a real interesting time for sure. Uh, thanks for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. I'm really interested to hear what you, what kind of feedback we have. Thanks for everything guys. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.